Welcome back to Mad Medicine. In this lecture, we're going to be discussing erythrocyte basics. Now, if you guys don't know, on our YouTube channel, YouTube forward slash Mad Medicine, we have a playlist for the Hemonk lectures for step one. So I highly recommend you guys go check it out. And while you're there, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. And with that being said, let's start the conversation. Let's begin by talking about what blood consists of. There are three main types of cells in our blood, and they're broken down into three main categories. The first category are erythrocytes, the second, thrombocytes, and the third, leukocytes. Now these are your red blood cells, right? These are gonna be your platelets. And these right here, the leukocytes, are going to be your white blood cells. Now, in leukocytes, you can also break them down to granulocytes and mononuclear or agranulocytes. Okay, now let's talk today. We're only going to be discussing erythrocytes. That's the only topic of the conversation for today. In our later videos, we're going to be covering thrombocytes and leukocytes. But right now, let's talk about erythrocytes and uh, some basic things you need to know. So this right here is a red blood cell, a.k.a. an erythrocyte. This is a uh, colored image, a colored microscopic image of a red blood cell and what it looks like. The, the function of a red blood cell is to carry oxygen to the tissues and carbon dioxide to the lungs, pretty straightforward. And its general characteristics are that it is anucleated and lacks organelles, which adds to the central pallor, right? This little divot you have in um, the red blood cell. Now at the same time, the, the red blood cell also has a large surface area to volume ratio. This is good for gas exchange because that's the main function of a red blood cell. So because they have a good surface area to volume ratio, they're able to exchange a lot of CO2 for oxygen and vice versa. They're gonna live mainly for 120 days and they mainly use glucose for energy via glycolysis and 10% via the HMP shunt. Now you should have a good understanding of where erythrocytes are uh, formed and how they're produced. So when it comes to fetal erythropoiesis specifically, you need to understand that uh, there are different locations during development. They don't all develop in the bone marrow, even at a, at a fetus level. In fact, they actually go to the bone marrow at the very end. That's the last stage of development. And from then on, in our bodies and in adults, you're going to have uh, red blood cells being produced in the bone marrow. But in a fetus, there are four main locations of erythropoiesis, and they are the yolk sac, the liver, the spleen, and the bone marrow itself. Now, based off of what week the fetus is in when it comes to development, that's going to determine where the red blood cells are being produced. The main locations for red blood cells are going to be the liver and the bone marrow, as you can see in this image right here. This shows you uh, how much time uh, or how much red blood cells are produced in which organ. So right here, as you can see, the yolk sac has a very small amount along with the spleen compared to the liver and the bone marrow. Bone marrow being the biggest uh, uh, location and the most amount of uh, red blood cells being produced. The way I remembered this, the way I always remember this was with the acronym, you look so bad, right? The YLSB stands for liver, liver, yolk sac, liver, spleen, and bone marrow. I don't know why, but I always use this one. Now, the high yield stuff you need to know for erythrocytes for red blood cells when it comes to step one is that the membrane in erythrocytes contain a chloride bicarb antiporter, which allows for bicarb exportation and carbon dioxide transportation from the periphery of the lungs. Okay, this is very important. It's a chloride bicarb antiporter, meaning in one way you're going to export bicarb, so HC3O minus, okay? and you are going to import carbon dioxide. This is the lungs, and this is the red blood cell. That's what the antiporter allows it to do. Now, there are also certain, certain uh, states of uh, red blood cell production that you need to be well aware of. The first state you need to be well aware of is called polycythemia, also known as erythrocytosis. All this is is that you have an increase in hematocrit, meaning you are producing a lot of red blood cells. That's what's happening. You can also have something called aniso, anisocytosis, which means you have abnormal sizes of red blood cells, like this right here. You can see this is a really large red blood cell right here. And you have these really small red blood cells. If you look at this image overall, the red blood cells are not uniform. They don't have the central pallor like these ones right here. There's no central pallor or over here. This one has like a, not a central, but a peripheral pallor. This one, this is a normal red blood cell right here. 
So as you can see, this anisocytosis shows that you have abnormal sizes of red blood cells. The next thing you need to know is called poikilocytosis, which means you have abnormal shapes. Okay, so in anisocytosis, you have the different size. In poikilocytosis, you have different shapes. An example of this would be right here. As you can see, you have, let's see, this is a normal red blood cell right here, right? That looks normal. But then when you look around, you have these weird wonky shapes right here. You have this, uh, this more elliptical shaped red blood cell right here. So these are not consistent with the normal red blood cell shape, which should look kind of like a, a circle with a, centri a central pallor uh, located in the middle. That's obviously not happening, aka this should clue you into poikilocytosis, different shapes of red blood cells. And then you also need to know about reticulocytes, which are immature red blood cells that reflect proliferation. Reticulocytes are, you, are usually going to happen when you have high levels of uh, production of red blood cells. So if you have a, a, a cancer or some sort of uh, bleeding disorder that's happening, you will have reticul reticulocytosis, which just means you're going to be making a lot of red blood cells. And because you're making a lot of red blood cells, some immature red blood cells are leaving the bone marrow without maturing properly and are going into circulation. The other, uh, uh, the other state of red blood cells you should be aware of is called polychromasia, which means uh, you can see a reticulocyte with the GAMSA right, the right GAMSA stain, um, and it's going to show residual RNA. Now, this RNA, as you can see right here in the poly, uh, in the uh, GAMSA right stain, comes up as blue. And it shouldn't come up because the whole function of your blood cells when it's when they're being uh, produced is that they're going to get rid of this residual RNA right here. There's not going to be any uh, ribosomal residual RNA. So what ends up happening is that because you are releasing immature red blood cells, they're not they're not growing properly. You're not getting rid of this RNA like you should, and that is going to be able to be stained in a a right GAMSA GAMSA right stain. Now with that being said, that covers everything you need to know for the basics of erythrocytes. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Follow us on our social media accounts on Instagram and Twitter. And a fun fact, you guys, if you don't know, you can find these lectures on a podcast service that you listen to. Just search Mad Medicine and we'll pop up. Thank you so much for watching.